Good morning and welcome to my first video on the World Camping on a Budget series. So, I said in my last video, I'm going to start with rucksacks. So I've pulled some out, let me show you what I've got. Now the details on these, uh, pretty scant I'm afraid, I can only describe them. I've had them a long time. Uh, I've looked back through purchase history and so on and I can't really find a lot of information for you so I'll tell you what I know and maybe just give you a few hints and you can have a look online see if you can find something similar so if we start off oh, with a bag that I've had for years literally years. Um, I can't find any purchase history on this at all. It's just too far back, too old. Um, it's made of, it's not Cordura, but it's, it's something similar. It's quite thick, quite stiff. Um, features wise, if any of you have seen the DD um, Bergen that they do, with the, the removable action pack on the front. Same thing, more or less. The DD one's a little bit larger, um, and also it's squarer. This is the one downside of this bag, where it, it curves up at the top here. Depending on what you pack it in it, sometimes that sort of limits stuff a little bit. But I tend to use this summertime now, because I've got bigger bags. I have done winter stuff for this, but summertime. So just to quickly rattle through it, you've got this pouch section here, which is removable. It came with um, a waist strap, so you can wear that around your waist, or you could also clip it on the top there and you could have it around your shoulder sort of thing. Um, I've used this an awful lot over the years. The centre section there is perfect size for British Army mess tins. So you can put your cooker and equipment inside the mess tins, fold them together, pop them in there, it's all in one bit. Got the little pouches on the side here. I normally put torch, head torch, that sort of thing in one side. I put plastic bags in the other side just for putting rubbish in. Little miscellaneous pouch. The side pouches. Uh, best way to describe them is the 500ml water bottle uh, that you can buy from the supermarket or a large can of beer, the 500ml cans of beer. You could put two in either pouch, they're that sort of size. It is normally beer in there. Um, you've got a bit of molly on the side, on the front there. If you want to add extra stuff to it. I don't know how well you can see that. Got a large pocket on the front. Um, miscellaneous bits and pieces. I'll just, just stick in that one. Whether it be food and stuff in the netty section, and then the rest of it I might put, you know, my knife, all, all the bits and pieces that I want to find without emptying the whole bag in there. Undo the back here. It has got compression straps on the side. Just one big, big opening. It has got a pocket at the back which I'm guessing um, they were thinking hydration bladder, something like that. Uh, I just tend to put my folded up ground sheet, the cheap plasticky, just throw it on the floor type one. I'll stick that in the back of there. Uh, but it's just one big space, which I prefer. It's much easier having a large space, lots of little compartments. They just get in the way and they're never the right size. On the back, Small amount of padding, um, it's plenty comfortable enough. Having the ground sheet tucked in the back also 
makes it that little bit thicker to separate from your back to sharp stuff you've got in the bag. So that helps. These are padded straps. It's got the chest strap, which is always worth looking for if you know if possible, especially if you've got a lot of weight. Because as you're wearing the bag, it does stop this from happening. Because once the straps get sort of to the outer edge, it starts cutting off the blood supply to your arms and so on. So it helps keep them more central. And the waist belt, huge buckle. Um, it is a Welsh waist belt, not a hip belt. Um, it's not load supporting or anything like that, but it does stop the bag moving about so much on your back. So that's the small one, the little one that I would use summer camping. And I say I can't find any details on it, but there's lots of people out there making these. The thing to look for is this is sort of pleated this front pocket bit and you see how it's a funny a funny shape there curved if you look on eBay at 50 litre ish rucksacks you'll see pictures of this loads of different manufacturers they're probably all churned out in China but they're good bags nice big chunky zips on them um, they're not completely waterproof but being this like Cordura type material, they certainly can put up with a shower or a short amount of heavy rain without it coming through because it is sort of plastic on the inside. All in all, brilliant bag. One of my favourites, I use it whenever I can, whenever I can get the stuff that I want to take in it. It was about £12. It's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? 12 quid. That many functions, features. So, that's the little one. Um, for the winter kit, I needed a bit more than that. As I said, the, the top being curved, it made it difficult uh, to pack things in there and use the space efficiently, if that makes sense. You had to put the tallest thing in the middle and then you had big space here and here that you couldn't really use. It was just a bit awkward. So I wanted something squarer and a bit bigger. So I've got this one. Now, I'm not a fan of the camo, particularly. Uh, the old American digital stuff. Digital, digital woodland, I think it is. But, again, I bought this at a price on eBay. Um, it cost me about £20. It's 80 litre and I think normally they were about 29 if you wanted to choose the other colours but they obviously had too many of these and they've knocked the price right down on this colour. So, I don't care what colour it is really. Um, so yeah, so I've got this one. 80 litre. It's quite a good bag. got a very large storage area within the lid there and now can't undo that and it's just one big bag no little pockets or things on the inside uh, which makes it very easy to pack you can just ram a whole load of stuff in there no problem at all and it's sort of square-ish. The other reason for buying this one um, with a couple of the small tents that I use, the green summer bag, they were too, how can I explain it, when they're packed up with the poles the packet was too tall to stand up in a bag and I had to strap it on the outside which oh, I hate doing that, where this is tall enough I can stand up inside this. You've got a big front pocket. I normally put, again, it's like an incidentals sort of pocket. My stove, the, the things I need to get to quickly. The main body, I, I keep the actual camping equipment as, you know, the tent, the roll mat the sleeping bag, 
that sort of stuff in the main body. I don't want to be digging it all out if I want to just stop and make a cup of tea. So that goes in a pocket on the outside. The thing I don't like about this bag, although I have ne never had a problem, is the zips. They're very small. They're only conventional, conventional sort of size zips. Sort of like you find the, you know, the flies on your trousers. It's, it's that sort of zip. And when I first got it, I thought, oh, they're not going to last five minutes. I've had it a couple of years and they've never failed. Although with them being smaller, I think I'm conscious of that. So I, I am a little bit more gentle with them. Little front pouch here, which is useless. I can get a few bits in there. Not, not a lot. It doesn't open much. The straps stop it from opening. They're not quick release buckles like the top, so you can't just like snap it open and open it. So I put stuff in here that I don't need to get to very often because it just annoys me. It's such a stupid design fault. But apart from that, it's not a bad bag. It's got bigger side pockets, this one. Um, they're longer, but not quite as wide the green job um, and they don't open very big you know they're, they're that sort of size so you can stick a water bottle you know water bottle in each side but there's a lot of compromises with this bag but but I did buy it just for the decent size main compartment really back padding is minimal although I've never found it uncomfortable. The straps aren't quite so well padded. No chest strap on this one. But it has got the waist belt still. But again, an 80 litre bag, 20 quid. Let's put a sticky mark there, shall we, with that one. So that's 50, summer only really, although I have done winter in that, but it's a bit more winter time, or if I just want to carry a fair bit of stuff, an 80 litre, 50, 80, both 20 quid mark, I think that might even have been as low as 15 or something when I got it, but so I've had it so long I can't remember. Out of the two, this is the better bag, without doubt. It's just a shame it wasn't a little bit bigger. So, speaking of bigger, there's always that time when you need to carry a lot of stuff. I'm sure a few of you recognize this. A British Army long back Belgium. You can take these side pouches off, the rocket pouches, because they just zip on. Um, there's nothing particularly technical about it. It's built for the army. It's never going to be flash, clever. They're more worried about it being able to withstand a nuclear strike. Put a small pouch on the front. A little bit of molly. On the top here, huge zip to a massive compartment in the lid. Bloody zips on this are huge. Inside, pop that up. Another zip, more storage in the lid. big rain cover, snow cover, whatever you'd like to call this section. It gathers here to close up. It also gathers here to close up. It's just one big compartment inside. Much easier. Forget all these silly little pocket bits. They just make life difficult. If you take the side pouches off, 
it's 100 litres on its own. These side pouches are 10 litre. They are, I don't know quite how well I can show it. They are absolutely massive, these side pouches. So 10 litre each. Um, it is, again, one huge pocket. They're big enough that you could, without problem, stick a sleeping bag in one. It's, it's that sort of volume. It is, it is massive. Um, using both pouches, you're up to 120 litres. The danger of a pack like this is it is so easy to get an awful lot of kit in it you'll get to the point where you can't pick it up um, because it does just swallow gear um, you've got to use your head if you can use something this big i like the idea of something this big if i'm going out with not necessarily really heavy kit but something that's going to take up a lot of room. If, if you're taking out the, um, my hammock setup, you know, you, you've got your sleeping bag, my hammock's a big hammock, then you, you've got the tarp to go over the top of it. it. Whenever you go hammock camping, it always seems that there's more gear. You can lob it all in here, no problem at all. In fact, my hammock gear will probably go in the side pouches and leave this empty just for food. Um, they are great, but they would be very easy to overload. And as much as you see the young squaddies carrying them, loaded right up with all their provisions and ammo and all the rest of it, most of us aren't that age anymore, all that fit. Um, and they do it on such a regular basis, they're ready for it. It is not an ideal bag if you're going any distance for us mere mortals because it is bloody huge. I mean the bag itself is quite heavy but if you want to carry a load of gear it is the one. There's a reasonable amount of padding on the back, good grab handle, quite well padded on the hips there, on the hip belt. It's more of a hip belt on this one because it's it's so long. Um, straps aren't very big, but they're quite thick, quite quite well padded. Got your loops here. As soon as you've got it on, you can grab the loops, tension it down. It's a monster. Price-wise, difficult, very difficult. This one. It, it looks like it's seen a few battles, as you can see by its, how faded it is. The rocket pouches got separate, hence why they're a slightly different colour. It looks like they either haven't seen as much daylight or they're not as old, but they'll fit each other anyway. Um, price wise, you're probably looking at anywhere from 20 25 quid to 50 quid, depending who you're buying it from whether it's private, whether it's a retailer, whatever. Um, if you want to shift a lot of kit, it's the one to have. Just one other little thing. I was only going to do the three, but my sister, hello Mo, she asked me about a day bag for her parents and stuff about. I can't recommend this one more, to be honest. I, I really like this. Um, it is a Carry More Covert 32. So I'm assuming 32 litres. Probably is, looking at the size of the others. I have done a review for this further down on my channel. So I won't go through all the spec, but day bag. Or even an overnight in the summer, if you're going really lightweight. They're very good. So I think that covers it. Think about what you're going to put in it. Try and avoid internal pockets. It's all right having you know pockets and stuff on the outside, 
but the internal body, you want just one big hole. It makes it so much easier to pack stuff in there, you'll get more in it, because the stuff that you take will never be the same size as the little fancy pocket inside. And also, uh, another thing to remember, when you're loading it up, put your soft stuff in the bottom, soft light stuff in the bottom. Anything heavy, you want it up here. You want weight around your shoulders. You don't want it at the bottom of your back. Because when you're walking, it'll just, it, you know, it's horrible. Get the weight up high and also get it as close to your back as possible rather than out. Um, this one's a, a, a bad example. But you see how this one's got the main the main body zip and then the front pocket zip that's okay but you can see quite often when you look through rucksacks they do ones that come out quite a long way there's like three four zips worth and it's almost as deep that way as what it is wide if you're gonna put weight in it forget that it's moving the weight so far away from your center of gravity as soon as you start going on rough ground or whatever no it's not going to be comfortable. Go wide or go long. Don't go outwards. I think that's it. It might have been a bit rambly this video because I've got a very foggy head this morning and I'm having a job to concentrate. But cheap bags 50 litre, 80 litre, 120 litre. I think 15 pounds, 20 pounds, and I think I paid either 30 or 40, I can't remember. Doesn't have to cost a lot of money.